Morning, guys. How are you doing? Great. Um, I'm a landing with Busiso Leope. That's my full name. I'm an entrepreneur, so it's always nice to be in a room of clanging people like myself, you know? So give yourselves a round of applause for being crazy. Sure. So they call us crazy, they call us unorthodox, they call us douchebags, they call us all these different names, right? Because we don't fit into the system. I think we are creative people and we believe in ourselves and we believe we can change the world just using our minds and connecting people and just we, can, we actually can shift the world. Um, it's beautiful for me to see how you guys are shifting Kailicha, how you're shifting Cape Town. I think this is going to be a first of many. I think um, this is going to grow in leaps and bounds like crazy. It's beautiful for me to see all these faces. Elokshin, Ekasi, and Bashalini Beautiful. Thank you. For people who don't know what I do, I do a lot of things. I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a creative entrepreneur. I'm somebody that believes that um, I gotta do things for myself. You know, I come from a township just like this. I think we all know about uh, the history of our country and where we come from. And a lot of us were never given opportunities when we were growing up. The system oppressed us. We grew up under the apartheid system where we're not designed to succeed as black people. We, we were growing up in a country where we were forced to study woodwork, bricklaying, etc., and all these stupid courses that they forced us to go to technical college and study so that we can go work um, for, for the white man back then in those days. And as South Africa has changed and it has evolved, there's so many other opportunities for young people, but still, there's a lack of knowledge in the townships for a lot of young people to access, for instance, things like the internet so they can be, so they can be able to better themselves. People like myself who happen to have you know, done well for themselves and become uh, popular by being on television and radio, we've got so many eyeballs on us. Young people are looking at us. So people like myself have to use the influence that we have to impact young people. That's why I love this room. I love the energy. I'm inspired by the bond. I'm inspired by what you guys are doing here. I'm even inspired to start something like this back in my township in Tembisa because a lot of young people require opportunities. So if the government is not going to do opportunities, we can't keep on sitting back and blaming the government all the time. People like myself, people like Sia, people like Fred, people like yourselves, we all have to stand up and do something for our country. We have to do something for the new generation that's coming after us. We can't keep on complaining all the time. And that's exactly what I've done. I come from a Tembisa with nothing. I come from a, a township just like this, walk to school, sometimes in winter, broken windows, can't study properly, it's cold, etc., etc. You walk to school, it's not easy to study. We didn't have electricity, we studied on candles. You know, we didn't even have, we didn't even have I, I don't even know what they call it in a slung, that thing that keeps a, a candle standing. We'd use like a Coca-Cola bottle to just put in the candle there. And we didn't even have ceilings, we didn't have... We, we, we had Amazanke, you know? When it rains, it's just always wah in the house. So I, know if you, I don't know if any of you guys have stayed in a shack before. If it's hot, it's hot in the house. If it's cold, it's cold. That's the type of environment that I come from. I come from Ekasi. We didn't even have tarred roads. We didn't have satellite television. We didn't have cell phones. There was not a lot of things that were provided for us, for us to succeed. So you had to fight to get out of the township. You had to fight to make yourself somebody. And the one thing that changed my life was an education. My parents did all they could to provide me an education so I can be able to maneuver this country called South Africa. So I can grow up and become the person that I am. So I grew up to work very hard to get myself on um, radio. Difficult to get on radio. I first got into community radio, Voice of Tembisa. I started out there from the bottom of the bottom, working at the community radio station, serving, working for free, learning broadcasting, meeting people, building myself. And then on campus, I also participated on campus radio, working out on campus, getting onto the radio station, learning about broadcasting, putting together events, just being this young hustler was involved with the SRC and a lot of kids they underestimate the opportunities that you get by being a part of the SRC or just some form of group in your campus because it gives you opportunities to be exposed to how to lead students or to learn how to keep yourself busy and do things and make things happen, do things for students, serve. And I've always been that type of person. 
My name's Musiso means blessing. And my mom has always drummed it into me that you're blessed to become a blessing. So everything you do, you must always remember about your brothers. Remember your sisters. You must always try as much as you can to impact other young people. But anyways, from community radio, worked my way up to get into a radio station that was buzzing at the time, youth station called YFM. Tried to get into YFM over a year, I couldn't get in. Second year, tried to get into IFM, I couldn't get in. Third year, tried to get into IFM, I couldn't get in. And those days, I was still working for the community radio, still working for the campus radio. We used to use cassettes. Who remembers the TDK cassettes? <laughs> <laughs> we used to rewind the cassettes with the, the yellow fine point ball pen. You remember those, right? And I used to carry my demo tape all the time. Like every time when I travel, I always carry my demo tape because I'd never know who am I going to meet, when, how. I just wanted opportunities. And then YFM ran a talent search competition called Tropica Voice of the Future. It was sponsored by the drink, Tropica. And I entered for that competition. I was doing my in-service training at the time at a company called Telcom. You know Telcom, right? I was working at Telcom because I had been studying at Vets Tech at the time because I couldn't get into Vets University. But I tell the girls that now nah, go to Vets. You know? <laughs> that's tech. And I tell, no, it's tech. Yeah, tech. Yeah, go to that's tech. But I mean, you know, working my way up on campus, being involved with the SRC team, putting together events at school, meeting people, just being involved and just being all the time helped me to be able to express myself in front of people, to speak in front of people, to create relationships, to network. I've just always been that kid. At some point, I was selling stolen cell phones on campus. Well, I wouldn't steal them. I'd go to the township, buy them from the guys, come back on campus, sell them on campus. At the time, cell phones were still new, and a lot of people didn't care at school if the phones worked, as long as they had the phones here. <laughs> Who remembers the pagers? Remember the pager? So just after the pager era, when the cellular phone started, I saw a market on campus because guys just wanted to look good by holding cell phones. So I'd sell them cell phones. So I'd been selling all my life, 12 years old, selling at my parents' spaza shop in the township. I'd grab some of the things from the spaza shop, I'd go with it at school. Lunchtime at school, I'm selling loose drawers, cigarettes. I'm selling sweets. I'm selling, who remembers the Tinkies biscuits? I'm selling Tinkies. I'm selling sweets like Cheryl's and Humbucks and those type of sweets. I was just that type of kid. If I'm not selling at school, after school, I'm selling at my parents' spaza shop. Weekends, I'm at my mom's hair salon. At the time, I hated it. Because I was like, these guys don't want to give me a chance to go play with other kids. Why I got to be selling all the time? Why I got to be selling all the time? Little did I know, I was learning the fundamental basic principles of entrepreneurship. And I've since ever I've been like that. I've never been able to work for anyone. I've always been able to work for myself. I'm difficult to employ as well because I just want to do things my own way. Anybody else who's like me in this house? <laughs> While you're in the right room, give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> sure. So if you think you're crazy, yes, you are crazy. If they call you crazy, don't be mad at them. It's okay. There's people like us in this world. You know, and and, and we're, not, we're not the easiest people to employ, but we got to employ ourselves then. And then working my way up, getting into YFM through the talent search competition, I got on and I did the graveyard slot for two years at YFM without getting paid. That's all I needed. That's all you needed as an entrepreneur, just a small opportunity. Nobody's going to do it for you. You got to create an opportunity for yourself. You got to create the little, you got to create something out of the little that you have. If you don't have anything, create something out of the little that you have. That's how entrepreneurs think and that's how we operate and that's who we are. Stop complaining, stop pointing fingers, make something happen. But the Abur Maka plan, Chuni plan in dot. Chuni plan in dot. Chuni plan, connect with people, Shashaya Bantu, Ring and Abantu, Shangani Saman, you know. You can't just be sitting back and complaining, yeah, and waiting for the opportunity to come. No opportunity is coming. You gotta get up and go look for opportunities. That's the type of person I am. And I believe in myself so much because the mom gave me the love. The mom, oh, by the way, this is my little brother. His name is um, Rory Sang. <laughs> Rory Sang is um, the longest serving SRC president at UCT. He's a student. He's just finished last month, right? Last semester. This semester, actually. 
this week. Oh yeah, so he's, uh, he's graduating. Give him a round of applause. <laughs> I'm so proud of this young man because it's been very difficult to um, help Rorisang through university. Just as is the case with a lot of us black kids. It's tough, it's expensive. It's very expensive. And he's had a, quite a, a, a tough childhood, but he's been shown the love. He lost his mother at a, at a, at a young age, Rorisang. Very bright and smart kid. He inspires me all the time. So I've always been like that myself as well. Just wanted to get an educate, education, wanted to better myself. Campus Radio Wife M, Graveyard Slot, two years. From Graveyard Slot, look for agencies, got onto television, started presenting TV shows, and then I started understanding the value of self-worth. I started understanding what branding is. Started a record label, I think it was early 2000s. Some of you guys know TS Records, right? So I started TS Records with a friend of mine, his name is TK. I was very young, I was 21 years old, just a kid. You know, when I see the likes of Abosi, I get excited because you got to start young. Entrepreneurship is good when you start young. The reason why Indians are good at it, Jews are good at it, because they introduce their kids from an early age. And, you know, they grow up within that culture of running the family business. And they just become better as they get older. So entrepreneurship should be imparted to our kids from an early age. So if you've got a child like I do, I've got a four-year-old kid, you got to start teaching them entrepreneurship from an early age or expose them to it. Even though they don't become entrepreneurs when they grow up, but it's an important thing for them to learn that you got to have the skill of creating things for yourself. you got to have the skill of negotiating. you got to have the skill to close. You gotta have the skill to look for opportunities. And just in a nutshell, um, in these 39 years that I've lived, was my birthday on Monday, I've been able to, yes, uh, 39, 39, yeah, 39. <laughs> the big 4-0 is next year. <laughs> I've been able to um, run an independent record label, TK, successfully. If you hear brands like Zahara, Ntantlama Figuzolo, Pro, Mzegeze, Gentando, Brown Dash, May so rest in peace. Those are some of the artists that have been able to help and contribute, build, to become the names that they are in the industry today. That's a record label that I started running at age 21. Made a lot of mistakes, bought sports cars, owed the tax man, didn't run the business efficiently with my partner, but we learned how to run a business. We was very successful at it, it was an independent record label, but the money management part of it was, it sucked, it was bad. But as I've gotten older and started other businesses, I've learned how to work with other people that, you know, can help us become better. Because us entrepreneurs are, our mind is all over the show. And a lot of the things that we start, we really can't run them. We start things, but that's why it's important for us to have the right partners like Tony, who's my business partner who's over here. Tony, stand up, let them see you. <laughs> I'm grateful for having met people like Tony. Myself and Tony, with two, um, a couple of our other business partners, we looked at the um, radio industry. Tony has started a couple of radio stations in his career. I've worked for eight radio stations. I've been fired twice. Yes, eight. <laughs> As I told you, I'm not the easiest person to employ. Um, the last time I got fired at Metro FM, I was advertising this drink over here. <laughs> <laughs> so let me tell you what happened it was at a live awards show 10,000 people in the auditorium arena Durban ICC 11 million people watching <laughs> 11 million people watching and the TV is live it's not the rewindable, Mustang. There's no cut. They see this thing, they can't unsee it. It's an opportunity, this one. <laughs> That's what entrepreneurs do. Entrepreneurs see opportunities when other people don't. Entrepreneurs risk. We risk. We risk. We risk takers. I risk with my job, but I knew what the worst, what's the worst that could happen. I'm going to get fired. But if I get fired, it's going to make the news. And everyone's going to want to know why am I fired. I'm fired because... <laughs> so let me tell you what I did. I got the entire auditorium of about 10,000 people screaming more fire. 
I got them screaming more fire maybe almost 10 times on live TV with over 10 million people watching. And for me, I couldn't do it any other way because the government says we must create jobs as entrepreneurs or we must create businesses so we can create jobs and employ our brothers and sisters. But then you've got institutions like the SABC that belongs to the government that fires me when they're supposed to be empowering young entrepreneurs like ourselves. Because you can't compete with the big boys. If you're talking all those other beverage brands that are huge, they've got millions to spend on advertising. How does a young CEO start a company and afford to advertise his business on the public broadcaster? He will not be able to until he makes money many, many years later, and then he can afford. If you're watching Generations, peak time, prime time television, it's 180,000 rands to put a 30 seconds ad during Generations. 180,000, one spot. Now, if you see those ads all the time from all these different companies, it should give you an idea how much these companies spend. Now, are young entrepreneurs going to be able to get those opportunities? Are they going to be able to get their, their, their brands advertised? No, they won't. So people like myself see loopholes with risk, and then we take advantage of those opportunities. I'm not saying you must try it at home. You'll get fired. <laughs> To cut the long story short, myself and Tony, we decided to innovate. And I think it brings me to um, innovation. It's very important for us to innovate, guys. That's why it brings me joy to be in a room like this where they're telling me that's the games room. They're telling me young entrepreneurs come here during the week. They use the Wi-Fi. They use this as an office space. They connect with other like-minded young people. We have to innovate. Technology allows us to innovate. If you go and apply for a radio station license from Ikasa, it's going to take you a couple of years. One of our media moguls in the country is a gentleman by the name of um, Kivan Mkari. He owns a radio station called Capricorn FM in the north. He also owns a radio station called Power FM in Joburg. He won two radio station licenses back in 2012 for the Free State and the um, Eastern Cape. It's six years later today, those stations are still not up. I'm just making you an example of how difficult it is to go the government route and get things done. He's still waiting. I don't know what's going on, but he's got the licenses. He will launch at some point. So people like myself and Tony, we had to innovate. How did we innovate? We've got Wi-Fi in 40 taxi ranks around Gauteng. And then we decided to pull the signal from the taxi ranks and put in streaming devices in 1,000 taxis. So basically, we are an online station that has put together amazing talent that creates content on a daily basis, which is an online radio station that speaks to ordinary consumers. And then what we've done, we stream this online radio station with content that speaks to the masses of South Africa. We stream it into a thousand taxis. Now one taxi takes a minimum of about 14 people. That's one load. Comes back with another 14 people. Takes 10, 20, some odd trips a day. Times that by a thousand, those are our listeners. They are a captive audience. When you're sitting in the taxi, you don't decide what cries. <laughs> Sorry, that's direct translation, right? Or <laughs> Kalan. You don't decide what plays. Kalan. Kalan. The driver decides. So the drivers are our biggest stakeholders because they keep their passengers listening to Massive Metro. And that's how we've innovated the space. We've just turned one last month. The radio station is running amazingly. And the reason why I'm talking about Massive Metro because Metro fired me, right? <laughs> Entrepreneurs do that. When you are shifted from a, a comfort zone, when you've got your back against the wall, you have to use your mind. Think. Even if you don't have the money to start whatever your dream is, you're an entrepreneur. That's why there's these types of sessions, so you can network, so you can have relationships, so you can be able to speak to different people. If you, the government can't find you, if the banks can't find you, if the, the, the uh, government agencies and institutions can't find you, then what do you do? You go look for funding. But it doesn't mean that if you don't get the funding, then you're not going to go ahead with your ideas. You got to move ahead somehow. When, I, when we started with Tony, I didn't even have a single cent. But we've got a radio station that's running. 
It tells you that we're able to put people together around the table, tap into the value that you think you have as an entrepreneur, and how do you put that on the table, and how do you communicate what value you have, and what can you put onto the table? Hello, baby. <laughs> I'm so drawn to little girls. My, my girl is almost the same age. She's four. You know, so for me, having worked on television and radio, I used that and I said, okay, so I've got some sort of value. And I think I can translate this value that I have into building businesses that are going to be, my daughter was saying on the video, legacy. Building a legacy, right? So right now, we've got over 40 young people that are at Massive Metro on a daily basis, creating content, learning about the media, learning about broadcasting, learning about digital, etc. On a daily basis, they're there. We're taking interns as well. So me getting fired opened an opportunity for somebody else to get employed, and me getting fired, getting together with bright minds like Tony, we created employment for over 40 other people. So sometimes what you think may be your misfortune, it may be your opportunity. So as an entrepreneur, that's how you got to think. The glass is always half full, not half empty. No matter, no matter how bad the situation is, you got to always try and look at the positive or just always try and turn it around. How do you turn this thing around? How do you turn it around? How do you turn it around? You got to always turn situations around. So when we turn that situation around into creating a radio station, before it was a radio station, it was just a show. Because after I was fired, I was like, but I love radio with all my life. What do I do? I'm like, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go to my own house studio. I'm going to broadcast my show like I'm still on Metro. And I'm going to record it onto a CD. And I'm going to give away those CDs to taxi drivers. But then times are evolving. Times are moving on. People are no longer playing CDs. And it was a match made in heaven when Tony and them came on board. Because it's, it's a message that one had been sending to the universe the whole time. That one day I'd love to own a radio station. One day I'd love to own a radio station. Because when you send your dreams to the universe and you always see them all the time, you assume that it's already there and you're working, you're grinding all the time, at some point the universe responds, right? So the universe responded. Massive Metro is running great, amazingly. When we got fired, we were doing about just a little under 2,000 cases a month, and that's about two and a half years ago. We're now doing 100,000 cases a month. That's over two million units every month. <laughs> Somebody asks and says, I walk into a store, I can't find your drink. Where do you sell these drinks? Here, Imofaya Mahasla, see, Pais is I say that again. Imofaya Mahasla, see, Pais is Means that we, su we supply wholesalers. The Indian community has been so wonderful to us. They took us in and they said, you're going to have to drop your prices, though. <laughs> We're like, okay. And then they've been a big part of our success. Because we use social media to drive traffic to the wholesalers. The young unemployed people from the township or young unemployed graduates go buy the drink at a cost price. They go make themselves 100% profit. If you can ask me, what do you buy my drink? I can't tell you. I don't know. I'm going to ask you. All I know is that this is Trati. It's in the street corners. So if you go to Joburg, street corners, just more fire, more fire, more fire, more fire. And for me, what's beautiful about it is it has started teaching young people about selling. Because a lot of them is just that ego. What are people going to say seeing me selling the streets? So I've decided to join them because I've sold before in the streets. So I sell at least once a week. I'm always out there activating the radio station, activating the drink. And our activations are different. I don't just stand there with the mic, hey, come and buy more fire. No, I sell more fire myself. I go to the taxis, I walk, and I scream more fire. I shout and I scream. I record myself, I put it on my Facebook. Young people see it on Facebook. They're like, where can I get it? I want to do the same thing. Because you've got so many eyeballs on you that a lot of the things that you do, young people are influenced. They do as you do. But what's beautiful about it is, as they do what I do, they're making money out of it. And that keeps my business growing. And we've just signed a deal this past week, so we're going to be on all the filling stations nationwide from October. You can give me a round of applause. Yeah. We're about to become one of the big boys now. The barrier to entry has been so big, it's been tough to grow the brand. We never gave up. This business started in 2014. We sold our first can on the 26th of January. We sold our first can. It's four years later now. 
It's still not in retail, but we never gave up. But just last week, we've just signed Imperial, we've just signed KLL Distributors, we've just signed Palm Tree Distributors. Our drink is going to be at every filling station in this whole country by this festive season. And it's a great thing, and the reason why I'm sharing that story, I'm trying to say to you, as an entrepreneur, there is going to come to that point where you want to give up. It's going to be so tough that you not only just want to give up because it's tough, you're probably in debt. You're probably owing people money. You probably don't even know what to do anymore. It's been tough. You probably feel that nobody's giving you opportunities or nobody's opening doors for you. Well, I'm here to tell you, nobody should open doors for you. You got to kick down those doors. You got to be like me. If retail doesn't get you in, take the damn drink, go sell it in the streets. Who are you to just go in to pick and pay? Oh, you... It's not your mother's place, this place. <laughs> no, it ain't going to happen like that. At the beginning of my talk, I spoke about the previous system in this country. It still doesn't favor a lot of us. They can say there is BEE. You and I both know that's nonsense. It has only benefited a few. A lot of you young guys, as we speak right now, you are struggling with getting your businesses off the ground in Cape Town. Because the system also is there and it's a barrier to entry in whatever industry you want to get into. But I'm here to tell you that it shouldn't make you give up. It shouldn't be that excuse that you always give to the universe. Hey, they don't give us opportunities. Hey, it's tough. I don't speak like that. I don't speak negativity out of my mouth. If I do make a mistake and I do that, I take my words back. I control my mind. I don't know how many of you guys have read Napoleon Hill's um, Think and Grow Rich, right? It's all in your mind, right? The law of attraction, right? I operate like that. I speak it into existence. I speak things into existence. I don't ever speak anything negative out of my mouth. I never post anything negative out on social media. I never gossip about people. I always post, tweet, communicate, share videos, positive things about what my work is all about, what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing. That's what I do on a daily basis. And the universe tends to respond. It takes a while, but I'm not the giving up type. So people like myself are destined for greatness. We're destined for success because we do know that it's coming. So you got to have that type of mindset. Know that it's coming. No, you got to know. You got to know. So when I say to people, my previous book was called Billionaires Under Construction. They're like, hey, Lentonia Sanyi Pamben. Can't be calling yourself a billionaire when. But I'm I am. How I am. That's me. You don't think you are, so don't impose your fears on me because I am. Because I believe in myself, I know I am. I don't even say I am going to be. I say I am. My affirmations are in present tense. Entrepreneurs, your affirmations have to be in present tense. Watch what you are, Tababa. It's all in your tongue. Watch what you are. You can't keep on saying, hey, the town government descended. Hey, it's tough, guys. No, Baba, kick down those doors. Break down those barriers. Keep going back. They send you keep going back. They send you keep going back. Keep going back. Keep going. Okay, the, just you know about the other side. Get yeah, jump on the fence, but keep going back. That's how entrepreneurs operate. Because unfortunately, nothing is going to come to our plate on a silver platter. We have to fight for what we believe in. We have to fight for what we want. We have to create. We have to think these things. We have to get people together. We have to convince people to believe in our ideas. But we have to see ourselves as successes. So after they fired me, a lot of the things me um, went a little bit south in my life. Not even a little bit. It was quite tough. But you bounce back. I bounce back. It's hardly two and a half years later. I'm standing in Cape Town. I'm addressing other entrepreneurs. I've got a radio station. I'm glad I got fired. I've got a drink that's growing because I believe in myself. Guys, you got to believe in yourself. Nothing is going to happen. How do you expect us to believe in your idea or to believe in you if you don't believe in yourself? So if I didn't believe in myself, Tony wouldn't be my business partner. How does he believe in me if I'm also doubting? You know, I'm just trying. I'm just, I am, but we are not trying. We are doing things here. Yeah. Since this is into Zenze, that's the mentality. We make things happen. We believe in ourselves. We've got a great product. We're smart, we're young, we're bright. We're in the right continent. We've got something on the table. This is amazing that we have. You have to get into, actually we're doing you a favor by choosing you to be a part of our project. Because this project is amazing. If you're not going to be a part of it, you're going to regret it. That's the attitude. That's my attitude. Entrepreneurs, you, what you've got in your mind, or what you've got in your hands is of value. 
You must never under underestimate it. Even if it doesn't have money, don't think money dictates the value of your idea or your worth. Whatever it is, it's brilliant. I've got the best drink in town, baby. More fire. More fire, baby. The number one bread in Africa. More fire, baby. More fire. You can hear the passion when I talk about it. You can see the confidence. It's black. Bold. Signifies strength. The color of boldness. It's got the fire. It's got the burning desire. Because it's more fire. <laughs> It's the best tasting drink in town. It's the number one brand in Africa, not just in South Africa. It's the nicest tasting drink. It's the only drink in the world when you open it says tea. Oh. Yeah. Why, am I, why am I giving you guys that pitch? That should be your attitude when you're looking at your business or when you are presenting your own ideas or your business. You've got something incredible. What you have is incredible. It's the most amazing thing that's ever been done. If they say, yeah, but it's like, what? No, it's not even, it's better. <laughs> that's the attitude. I'm blind. I'm blind. You're worth it. You're amazing. You're brilliant. You're bright. You can get anybody on board on any of your ideas. You can do anything you want to do. Stop imposing limitations on yourself. You are worth more than you think. You don't understand how incredible you guys are. Guys, it's about time we start thinking differently. It's about time we uplift the township economy. Guys, it's about time we go back to those guys that are sitting in the street corners, we involve them. I involve these guys, they sell this drink on a daily. I'm speaking to you right now, the zeros are going in there. Kling, kling, in the pen <laughs> And what I love about it is they're not just getting in for myself. I'm a social entrepreneur. I'm empowering my young people. Because they could be sitting in some corner somewhere and smoking, but they're selling more fire. And it's an easy sell. It's just 10 bucks. And people connect with the story because they love the soul. They love the story. They know it started from scratch. They know that it's a black business. That's, that's just nobody's in the space. No black people are in the space. So if I had fear, I would have been like, I know I, that's too big. I know me, I can't. I know. All right, Baba, I can and I am doing it, and I will, and it's going to become, num it's actually number one already. <laughs> That's the attitude. You're not arrogant if you approach your dreams like that. It's self-confidence and just knowing your worth and knowing what you've got. But for Tony to buy into you, he has to see that you've bought into yourself. You believe in yourself. He can see, he must see that you know what you've got that is incredible. You must make him feel he's lucky to be a part of your idea. <laughs> because he is lucky. He must make them feel like that. I'm using Tony as an example, by the way, but he is lucky. <laughs> I'm lucky. I'm kidding. I'm, I'm the lucky one, guys. Brilliant guru, radio guru in the country. Started a couple of radio stations. Amazing entrepreneur. Having such people in your business is very crucial to the success of your business. Us as entrepreneurs, we're risk takers. Our mind is all over the show. And we make things happen, yes. And we, we, we're hungry and we've got this energy and it's all great. But for us to take our ideas forward, we need professionals to assist us to move this dream. You need people with the right skills. You need people with those degrees. You need the MBAs. You need to partner with the right people. But the right people need to partner with the right people. So you got to first be the right person. How do you make yourself the right person? Just the image, even starting with your own image. Who are you? What do you represent? Are you just going to start a business that's just going to take, take money, take, 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 take? You can't just be about take, 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 take. What are you giving back to the community? If money is your motive or when money is your motive, you will always be lacking. But when purpose is rooted in service, serving others, money chases you. You can't get away from it, right? I say that quote all the time because that's how I've led my, I've led my life over the past decade and, a, decade and a half or so. When you're all about wanting to empower other people, wanting to get ordinary people involved, thinking about models that empower the people, that's the only way your business is going to grow. 
This wouldn't be our life today if I did not involve people. It's been difficult to get into retail, but we made it happen that we sold it in the streets. We never gave up. Retail now has knock, started knocking on doors on us. We tried to even get funding to start the business. We couldn't get any funding from anyone. Right now, as I speak to you, just last year alone, how much money is we keep turning away? Because we don't want them. Well, we do, but those <laughs> money is no. It's not the right man. When I say it's not the right man, I'm not saying it's not enough. I'm saying there's people that just want to throw money at you and invest in you, which is great, especially when they see the train moving. But for us, you know, we're sort of looking for people that are going to add value. Maybe another bigger drinks company comes on board and buys a stake. That makes sense because they're going to grow the business. Not somebody's going to throw you with money and expect, uh, and expect ROIs, etc. But for us to start getting those emails in 2017, imagine how long we've been struggling. Our research and development was in 2013. Sold our first can in 2014. Only in 2017, people are interested to invest in us. Why? Because we are now a moving vehicle. So entrepreneur, you got to be a moving vehicle. Stop telling me about business plans. Stop telling me about business plans. Stop telling me about business plans, daughter. Because it's fans and it's telling me about numbers, but I'm not seeing anything moving. Move this thing, let's see it. This kuchu kuchu must move. No one is going to invest in it if it's not moving, guys. It looks fancy on paper. It's a great business plan. Yes, it's awesome. But how do we know if it's going to work? We're going to give you money and then the next thing, this business of yours in 18 months is no longer working. Uh, we are not sure. So entrepreneur, start where you are. Start with the little that you have right now. Because your investors are coming, but they want to come when they see it moving. <laughs> Look at those young ones. They're smart. They're peaking. <laughs> so one of my business partners, actually, I started this with him. He, he grew up in a, in a squatter camp. was pure. And he used to be chased out of class. He used to be like those kids. He'd stand by the window the entire period, just listening and learning and taking notes outside the class because the teacher, Beram Oshil, he used to, that's how he loved, that's how much he loved education. And for me, I attribute my success to the partners that I've chosen. Entrepreneur, you got to choose your partners right. I know that we all don't know who people are going to become when money comes in or who people are going to become when we experience challenges or who people are going to become when we are going through whatever we're going through. You don't know, but try as much as you can to choose the right business partners. Your, your, your business partners make your business. It's very crucial and it's very important because no man is an island. It's going to be very difficult for you to succeed, to succeed as an entrepreneur if you're going to work all by yourself. It's not possible. I think a lot of you guys in this room know it's, it's, you can never run a business all by yourself. It's very important the caliber of partners you choose or the people that get to be involved in your business. That's why you, as the leader of the ship, you got to be amazing in networking. You got to be an easy person to work with. You gotta deliver on time. You gotta meet deadlines. You gotta be humble. You gotta be somebody that other people would love to work with. Because you're never gonna make it alone. Even when you do make a bit of money or you do make millions, you make a lot of money, arrogance shouldn't even exist at all. Humility, 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 humble, humble, humble at all times. That's how you create relationships, that's how you maintain relationships. And nobody wants to work with a douchebag. Nobody wants to work with an arrogant person. Nobody, how irritating it is. I mean, you guys know arrogant people and you know what comes out of their mouth. It's always like, it's, you cringe and it's like, yo, you don't want to be that person. And don't let money change you or what you call success change you. You got to keep it humble at all times. I've interviewed thousands and thousands of successful people, both on radio and television. The most successful people are humble people. They're really humble people. And guys, we're in a country like South Africa. We face, we face by poverty as we speak. It's surrounding us. There's no need to be arrogant. Rather use the blessings to go bless other people. And as I get towards the end of my talk, uh, I've run an education foundation for about 10, 11 years now. Started in 2005. Wow, it's been 13 years now. I've got to make sure the brand is proper. I can't just ask you. No. <laughs> Every picture, every picture that Ken is in it, it's going to become number one. It is number one. It's called more fire. <laughs> I've always been inspired by 
You see, I've seen what education has done in my life. So I've always been passionate about education. So we started speaking in schools, we started doing uh, medicine, science, literacy programs, started doing feeding scheme programs, and we started getting bursaries and scholarships for these kids. So that's been going on for over a decade, and it's culminated into a long-term dream of mine, which has been an academy. So we've started it, we launched it last month. We've got 40 students, it's called the Hustlers Academy. We teach young people about entrepreneurship. That's why this just drives me crazy. Our school is based in Johannesburg, it's based in Houghton, it's a privately funded institution. I have partnered with a company called 360 Financial Services. Even then, to start the school, I didn't have money. But I was able to go speak to people, present my case, present my concept, convince those people to come on board. And usually when you do that, people want to look at who you are first. Because you need to remember, people don't necessarily buy into your idea. You're very lucky if they buy into your idea. They usually buy into who you are, right? So some of you guys came to this hall because maybe, oh yeah, here's some more fire for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> what I want to say, guys, and this also links to how you treat yourself. I spoke about humility, I spoke about image, I spoke about all these things because it's very important, right? So, and everybody's going to get, no, we're not going to sell them, everybody's going to get. Yeah. <laughs> absent-minded. <laughs> you know they say a black person's English runs out like that. <laughs> talk, 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 talk. It does. You know why it runs out like that, guys? Because we think in one language. I don't know if you guys know. We, we don't think in English. As I'm speaking like this, I'm not thinking like this. Guys, can you explain to other children, please? We think in one language. The translation happens in those seconds. So when a black person says, yeah, ne, is the translation is happening inside. Or when a black person says, sure, sure. Or when they say, serious. It's not serious, they're buying time. <laughs> serious. They're translating here. Yeah. <laughs> I know. But guys, let me get to the end. So we started uh, the Hustlers Academy. It's running in Joburg. It's got 40 students, partnered with financial, 360 Financial Services. And it's a great dream of mine because it teaches young people about entrepreneurship and we hope it's going to grow, and we hope we're going to find partnerships like these, and we're going to keep doing um, the impact out there and making the difference in the townships. So I've got three projects that I love so much, and we're about to, um, we're about to launch our fourth startup. If it doesn't happen in November, they say it's happening in January 2019. That's going to be our fourth startup company. So these startup companies that I've built for myself and my partners and my communities, I'm really proud of them because... They come from our own blood, sweat, and tears of coming from nothing to try and build something for yourself and for other people. And for me, I'm really proud of the work that we've been able to do. And when I look at each and everybody in this room, I see people like myself. I see myself in you guys. I think, guys, we're the future. We are the innovators. We are the pioneers. We are the ones that are going to take this country forward. But nobody's going to do it for us. We have to do it ourselves. And we have to partner with each other because we can't work in silos and just work all by ourselves. We do need partnerships. I do know, guys, it's not easy. It hasn't been easy for me, too. It's still tough, but it's a fight on a daily basis. We fight, guys. Don't let anything stop you. You gotta keep fighting. You gotta keep knocking on those doors. You gotta keep kicking those doors. You gotta keep in being environment, in, in environments like these. What do they say? You hang around the barber shop long enough, you end up getting a haircut, right? You, you hang around such spaces long enough, or you hang around successful people or people like you long enough, at some point, you know, you, you got, I'm not going to say, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying, you, you are miraculously going to become successful, but if you hang around these types of spaces long enough, you become a better person, 
And you might just meet people that can take your business to the next level or people that can grow you. So I'd like to encourage you to attend more of these types of things. I'd like to encourage the organizers of this event to do more of these types of events. And I'd like to inspire you and say, it's, it's possible, guys. It is so possible, you'll be amazed. You know, hard work, it becomes so tough, so tough, 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 tough. And when it starts happening, it happens like this. And it's like, what? And, and, and all those years that you've worked so hard, it's like they were not even there. So I want to say to you, enjoy the journey. Don't be too much focused about when am I going to be successful. No, enjoy the journey. Even when it's tough. When it's tough, that's when you are learning to become a stronger person. So the tougher it becomes, the more stronger you are becoming. So please let the process happen. Put in the grind. Put in the work. The little things. Greatness comes in those little things that you do on a daily basis. From that email that you type, before you press send, make sure the spelling is correct. From the way you're greeting the lady at the door, or the cleaning lady, or the security guard, just with humility about how you carry yourself, how you dress, how you speak about other people, how you speak about your own life. You must speak life into yourself. You can't be speaking negatively. I hope you guys understand. I did say it earlier. Please refrain from speaking negative things. It's in grand. I'm happy all the time. Guys, I'm recharging. <laughs> but guys, I really wish you all the best with whatever you want to do. I know some guys, we, 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 we have got self-limitations, my faith. You can't say because I stay in such and such a province, I stay in such an area, there isn't this, there isn't that. I'm also from the same place, Dot. I'm from the same place, me too. Now I did not have anyone I'd, I'm like you, Siafan. Siafan a song, my faith. I see in my faith. The internet is like starting, it's depending on it. I see spanning, my faith. It was nice to see... Um, um, gentleman with the red t-shirt, I think you've got your own beer brand, right? Ukamba. It's beautiful, guys. It's amazing. It's beautiful. I don't think it was easy for that. I don't even think it's easy for him now. I don't think it was easy for these guys. He says a year ago, they were sitting at his coffee shop. A year ago. This is only the first event. So these things, success takes time, guys. And what is success to you? You can't rush the process. You gotta go through it like everybody else. Be burnt in the fire. That's part of learning. Learn. The more you learn, the better you become. And you need to remember, 40 is not old. 45 is not old. We're still young. We're still going to live until we're 70, 80, 90. So you're still learning. You're still too young. You are young, dot. Go through the process. Don't be chucking things. You're chuckling a Mercedes. You want to be driving a BMW. Oh, Lord. Don't rush the process. Don't rush the process. Don't compete with other children. Let them buy their BMWs. It's fine. Concentrate on your own journey. Run your own race. Run your own race, my faith. You know, that's what we speak about with Tony all the time. When we look at other stations, we're like, we're not competing with anyone. We're humble. We're running our own race. We're building our own baby one brick at a time. And we're laying those bricks as perfectly as a brick can be laid. One brick at a time. We're not rushing and competing with other people. They're doing this, now we must do it. No. Guys, run your own race, please. I wish you all the best. And I appreciate you guys coming today to come listen to me. And as I close it off, this drink here. <laughs> so, when I say it's the only drink when you open it says tea, people laugh at me. But if you're looking at it from the business perspective, it's <laughs> that's why I was explaining it earlier as a disclaimer. But basically, my product does say what I say it says, right? But you must also build some sort of a consumer experience. When your clients are buying into your supplies or your business or your ideas or your product, just like Ukamba, 
That man, I'm sure, has got a story around Ukamba. When he starts telling you about Ukamba, he pro he's probably passionate. And he starts telling you the story where you're like, wow. That's why they keep telling you, good. Johnny Walker was triple distilled. It was invented in 1837. And then when you're getting into Chisanyama there, you're walking like this. No, I want a Johnny Walker blue. Baksha Shai. Baksha Shai. They made you believe this thing is triple distilled. What, what? No, Baksha Shai. You can do the same with your own products, your own brands. I'm telling a story here. It's beautiful. Now I'm not even just telling my story. I'm living it. And I love it. I love the fact that it's taking us long to succeed because our story is just being built. And I love the fact that our story is being told during the social media age where there's proof. There's videos there. There's not some Pilsa handsome man of London to be telling me that in 1837 he created this fermented what what? I Namang. I, namang. That's why you should have fit. Until such time that you guys believe in yourself enough to create your own things and you believe in them enough yourselves and stop telling me about things of America. No, I'm here. This is locally made. It's locally made by young boys. This is called Patu. South African sneaker. It's the only breathing sneak. It's a perfume. Let's go. If I'm gonna ask people to support me, I must live it. I must support South African brands. I must watch South African movies. I must read South African stories. I must be proudly African. Guys, we've got a billion people in this continent. In the next 30 years, we're going to surpass China. We're going to be over two billion people in this continent. Forget about things of being influenced by America and London and what what. Gents, ladies, we've got everything we need right on this continent. Fifty-two minerals leave this country on a daily basis. They get mined, they go overseas, they come back, they sell them to you, and then I walk around with a Rolex watch, I'm like, I'm the man. But this was dug up by my, by my own father, down underground. We've got a rich continent. Create your own products, create your own brands for other people to consume. Or you will continue to consume other people's brands to make yourself feel better, right? That's why when you're driving a BMW, you're smiling. But that was a brand that was created by somebody else for you to consume. When are you creating your own? So we're changing mindsets in communities. We're making people understand that our own is better. Our own is good enough. I was saying to the other guy the other day, it's, it's an African Coca-Cola. He's like, yeah, yeah, this man is crazy. Yo, how can he compete with Coca-Cola? I'm like, no, don't you. You trying to impose your own fears on me. Me, I'm creating an African Coca-Cola. It's not even an energy drink. We way surpass that. This is me in my mind. You might not think so now, but I'm going to show you with my work. Guys, that's the attitude each and every one of us should leave with from here today. You gotta have so much, I'm not saying be arrogant. You gotta be so confident in what you're delivering. You gotta be so confident in yourself, so much so that when you're going through hardships, you are able to self-motivate yourself and bring yourself up and keep believing, keep fighting. This entrepreneurship journey needs for you to keep positive at all times. Look after your health. Stay clean. Mix around with the right people. Don't have negativity. Into, don't be um, consuming nonsense content. Things that are not in line with what you want in life or what you want to become. Stay away from that nonsense. If the news that you keep watching is always negative, then stay away from the news. Watch content that grows you. I watch content that grows me. I meditate in the morning. I run, I keep healthy, I eat healthy, I look after myself, I stay away from nonsense. I don't suffer from FOMO, where I must keep on going out and getting drunk all the time. No, I've got people that rely on me. I've got business partners, I've got so many people that are invested in me, I gotta look after myself. I can't be out there the next thing they catch me at a party, I'm drunk there, I'm coming, and then I'm on the daily sun. <laughs> Guys, we're running a very important journey. The future of this country belongs to all of us in this room. So let's start thinking that way, let's start acting that way, and let's start fighting and building those businesses. I wish you all the best. May God bless you. Thank you very much. Yeah.